Hey, what's up guys? Samsung's Galaxy A series is back, and we're starting with the A50. It's bringing a few changes this time around, so what's new? And can it hold up against the relentless mid-range competition? I'm Will for GSM Arena, and this is our Samsung Galaxy A50 review. The Galaxy A50 brings in new design from Samsung. Its frame and back panel are made of plastic, while the screen is from Gorilla Glass 3. Samsung calls the shiny back material glastic, and its hyper-reflective surface is unlike any we've seen from them so far. It refracts light in sort of a holographic way, such that it's hard for the eye to decide what color you're looking at, even on our black model. It's sort of difficult to catch on camera, but the color changing effect is really quite loud and even mesmerizing. Even though the A50 is made of plastic, it doesn't feel cheap, and with its tapered sides and slim edge, it's quite comfortable in the hand. There is no IP rated dust or water protection, which we did see on some of last year's Galaxy A phones. Keep this in mind if you're using the A50 near the pool. Samsung hasn't cut corners with the screen though. It's a 6.4 inch Super AMOLED with a tall 19.5 by 9 aspect ratio and a 1080p resolution. It isn't curved like on the S10. Traditionally, the A series phones have a flat display. At least this cuts down on accidental activations when using it. Samsung has turned over a new leaf as far as screen cutouts go. We don't have a hole punch here, but a U-shaped notch up at the top for the selfie cam. You can mask it as well with a black bar. The screen itself looks great, as you'd expect. There's plenty of pixel density at 403 ppi, and as an AMOLED, blacks are about as deep as you can get. It's pretty bright too, with 420 nits of max brightness in manual mode, and 550 nits in auto mode in bright conditions. Everything looks good when using it outdoors. Depending on which color mode you choose, you can be quite color accurate in multiple color spaces. And as an AMOLED, the A50 has an always-on display for your time and notifications. There isn't a notification LED though. Just like the Galaxy S10, the A50 comes with an under-display fingerprint reader in place of a traditional one. But unfortunately, it's one of the slower readers of this kind that we've seen. Face unlock is more responsive, but this method isn't as secure as a fingerprint. The Galaxy A50 plays audio with its single speaker on the bottom next to the USB-C port. It scored very good in our loudness test, but the sound is lacking in high frequencies and has some distortion at max volume. You do have a traditional headphone jack here, and sound through headphones is loud, but it doesn't have the best clarity. There is support for FM radio though, and there is plenty of storage available. 64 or 128 gigs on board, and it's expandable through microSD. The user interface of the Galaxy A50 is the same as on the S10, the new One UI based on Android 9 Pie. It brings some heavy customizations, but it's pretty clean and easy to use. Compared to the old Samsung experience, One UI has some colorful new icons, and a newly designed notification shade which is easier to reach. There are plenty of custom Samsung apps pre-installed on the phone. For example, there's the Gallery app, the File Manager, and Samsung Health, among others. And of course, the Digital Assistant Bixby is here, though without a dedicated button like you would find on Samsung's flagships. You can bring it up by holding down the power button though. And for navigation, you can opt to use gestures. By default, swiping from the bottom left brings out the recent apps menu, and swiping from the bottom right takes you back. A single swipe from the bottom center takes you home. It's all quite similar to just pressing navigation keys, nothing too special here. Inside the Galaxy A50 is Samsung's new 10 nanometer Exynos 9610 chipset, and either 4 or 6 gigs of RAM. In benchmarks, it sits somewhere between the Snapdragon 660 and the Snapdragon 710. Performance is great for its class, it's dependable for everyday tasks, and games run smoothly, with no heating or throttling. Battery life is excellent on the Galaxy A50. With this 4000 mAh battery, it scored a 98 hour endurance rating in our proprietary tests. The phone supports 15 watt charging, but sadly, since we didn't get a charger with our review unit, we can't be sure how fast it is to top up. Let's move on to the cameras. The Galaxy A50 has a triple camera setup. There's a 25 megapixel main cam with face detection autofocus, an 8 megapixel fixed focus ultra wide cam, and a 5 megapixel depth sensor for portrait mode. The default output of the main camera is 12 megapixels. In daylight, images have good colors and contrast, but the resolve detail is not stellar. The processing tries to compensate for this with some overly aggressive sharpening. Dynamic range is just average. If HDR is involved, the photos often look a bit better, with even exposure, 
and some of the blown highlights get rescued. Colors do come out a bit warmer though. You can also opt to shoot in 25 megapixels, but you don't have access to HDR here. The weird thing is it's sort of obscure and hidden in the interface. To get to it, you have to switch the aspect ratio from 4x3 to 4x3H. But in this mode, you get much more detail than the 12 megapixel photos, and otherwise, the quality is quite similar. Dynamic range is average, but the colors are accurate and contrast is excellent. Overall, we recommend using this mode if you care about fine detail, and the 12 megapixel one if you want to use the HDR. Switching to the ultra wide camera gives you again great colors and contrast, average dynamic range, and the level of detail leaves more to be desired. Overall, these shots are decent, but since there is no distortion correction applied, there is a lot of warping around the edges. In portrait mode, the 12 megapixel bokeh shots were pretty impressive for a mid range phone, with excellent subject separation. Looks like the depth sensor is really doing some good work here. In low light, 12 megapixel photos come out solid, with nice color saturation and exposure, even sharpness, and a decent level of detail. We suspect there's some pixel binning going on here. This makes sense given that when you switch to 25 megapixels in low light, the results are much worse, lacking in detail, noisy, soft, and even a bit blurry. Ultra wide shots at night are pretty disappointing as well. The Galaxy A50's selfie camera is 25 megapixels, though the default output is 12, and it has fixed focus. If you hold it the right distance from your face, and if there's plenty of light, you can get some detailed shots. Colors are spot on too. You can also opt to take selfies in 25 megapixels, and like the main cam, this mode doesn't work with HDR, but the images are very detailed and have excellent colors. The Galaxy A50 can record video up to only 1080p at 30fps. Though it's worth noting that you can record in 4K if you use a third party camera app like Open Camera. Regardless, electronic stabilization is always on in 1080p, and it does a stellar job. Quality wise, 1080p footage from the main cam is great, highly detailed, and with little noise. Dynamic range is good too, and colors are spot on. The footage from the ultra wide camera doesn't have great detail, but is decent as far as ultra wide videos go. So that's the Galaxy A50. It brings a stunning looking design even though it is made of plastic. Plus there's the excellent AMOLED screen, the great battery life, a solid chipset, and a pretty versatile camera, all for less than 300 euros. There are a few things Samsung could have done better here, like the fingerprint reader, which is quite inconsistent. I would just stick to face unlock. Plus you don't get water resistance here, and the loudspeaker quality leaves more to be desired. But even with all that said, at this competitive price it's pretty easy to look past these shortcomings. So if you're looking for a solid mid-range phone on a budget, the Galaxy A50 is worth checking out. Thanks for watching guys, and see you on the next one.